I'm Dr. Warren. And today I wanna to answer some questions about why antibiotics may not be working when you're suffering from chronic Lyme or chronic tick-borne illness. I think questions about antibiotics are right up there with some of the most frequent questions that I get. And people get confused as to why antibiotics work so well in the acute phase, but they don't work nearly as well when something's been chronic. I was at a seminar recently and Dr. Jacob Leone went through a slide presentation and showed this picture. And I thought it was a brilliant answer to this question, it just depicted it better than I'd seen it done in the past. So I'm gonna dive into a graphic that he shared that I think can be helpful to try and answer this question. So many people get frustrated when dealing with chronic Lyme because it can be difficult to kill. Now, one big reason that it's difficult to kill, Jacob Leone talks about wonderfully. This is a picture of me with Dr. Leone. I got to meet him at this recent conference. I've been quoting some of the articles. He is part of the John Hopkins research team that's been putting out um, some research on Bartonella. And what I wanna highlight, um, this is an article on Bartonella. We also have another one on Lyme, another one on Babesia. But what I have not really highlighted for some of my patients up until this point is the key part of this title where it says, botanical medicines with activity against the stationary phase of Bartonella, and also natural and botanical medicines activity against growing and non-growing forms of Borrelia burgdorferi, which is Lyme. So I wanna highlight here, what is a stationary phase and what is a growing and a non-growing form? So when you first get a bacteria, what happens is it grows and it replicates. And this is that acute stage when you just get bit by a tick and we get sick and antibiotics work really well so this is a video with cells growing. And this is what happens when something's active, antibiotics can actually get in and interrupt that ability of the bacteria to replicate. Because the bacteria are metabolically active, they're very vulnerable and antibiotics can work very well. When you initially get bit by a tick, we really think that these bacteria stay in this active form for about three to six months. Somewhere between three to six months, the infection switches from acute into chronic. Now here's a picture. This is directly taken from Dr. Leone's presentation and I thought it illustrated this point wonderfully. It says, what are persister cells? This is another term you'll see, persister cells or cell wall deficient cells or cyst cells or stationary phase or non-growing phase. These are all terms to describe there's different versions that the bacteria take. So in this illustration, we have a green bacteria and a yellow bacteria. These are actually meant to illustrate they're the same bacteria, they're in different forms. The green is the normal form we think about in which that antibiotics are very useful. This is the main form the bug is in, but once you've had this for a chronic period of time, it moves to the yellow form or the stationary form. This happens somewhere between three and six months after you've been bitten. So if you are past that three to six month window, the bug is more in this persistent form or the stationary form or a non-growing form, and that makes it much less vulnerable to antibiotics. If we look at some of these charts, these are taken directly from some of the studies, you're gonna see there's residual viability. This is something that I go through with almost all my patients, but the number here is showing that when you grow Borrelia burgdorferi, then you put it in a stationary phase and then you try to kill it, the antibiotics are not very effective. If you look at the doxycycline column, 73% of the Borrelia is still there after you tried to kill it with doxycycline. So the standard antibiotic is really only killing a quarter of it. And you can look at cefroxamine, you can look at Dapsone. This is one reason why some doctors are playing around with Dapsone as it seems to be able to hit some of these stationary forms. However, it can be a very difficult drug for some people to tolerate. And then notice some of the natural things that they're showing in this study, like garlic, show very, very good results. And this is one reason why we think using herbs, things like garlic, can be a very effective part of a protocol to heal from chronic Lyme. 
So what does work to kill persisters? Well, we have several studies that have come out from John Hopkins to help us try and answer this question. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but they have tested like 100 different herbs for Lyme, as well as published some things on Babesi and Bartonella. And here are some things that we know that work very well from some of these studies. Oregano, cloves, cinnamon, garlic, skullcap, Japanese knotweed, cryptolepis, artemisia, and myrrh. These are some things that we use in our protocols trying to help patients heal who have been dealing with these chronic bugs. Once again, when they're in that stationary phase, they're less vulnerable to some of the antibiotics and some of these natural products can work gently and also cause less of a Herx reaction while still being highly efficacious. So this is just a picture of the diagram we use in our, in our office, just trying to share with you what we do and how we kind of illustrate so that you have a better understanding of something that might be useful. You always want immune and detox support in with any Lyme protocol. Doing an antibiotic only approach or a killer only approach is really hard on your system, makes a lot of assumptions that may not be true and can be the way to do it with the most possible side effects and, the, and just the most difficult way to do it. So in our program, we always have some immune help in, for example, resveratrol, for example, cat's claw, for example, reishi or ganoderma, all help balancing the immune system. Once again, that's not an exhaustive list, it's just some examples. Next, we add in some detoxification support. Remember, when you're going after and killing these bugs, you then need to clear out these dead bugs, usually through the lymph system, in order to help get them out of your body. And they can, the dead bugs can cause more inflammation than the living bugs, which can give you that classic Herx. We have other videos talking about that. You're always trying to balance that immune and that detox help. But if you're going after bugs in the chronic form, we usually want something that is aiming at killing them. We've gone through why some of the antibiotics don't work. It's because the bugs are now in this persister form and they're more resistant to some of the antibiotics, which is why I believe when you're in that chronic state that herbals are a great choice to help your body heal. If you're in that acute state, the antibiotics work wonderfully. But after you hit that chronic mode and they've changed to that stationary form or that cell wall deficient form or that non-growing form, it really has more to do with the change in the bug that makes the antibiotics a tough choice for many people and why it takes longer, even if it's going to work, it can take much, much longer than that classic two week course of antibiotics and everything's better. That's really not how it works with chronic Lyme. And it's simply because of the way the bacteria has morphed. I'm Dr. Warren, hope you learned something.